My name is Parker Higgins. I work for the Electronic Frontier Foundation, uh, which some of you may know, it's a nonprofit that's dedicated to defending your rights in the digital world. Um, and that means that a lot of the times that I get up in front of a room to give a talk, it's scary and it's depressing. Um, I often talk about, you know, threats to your security that you didn't know about or people who are invading your privacy and you didn't know about it or copyright bullies who are going to be able to, to take your speech offline. Um, fortunately today, that's not at all what I'm doing. I'm going to tell you a very nice story. Uh, this is the story of a collection of beautiful watercolor paintings of fruits and nuts. Um, probably not like much else here at Wikicon. Uh, and for me, this story starts in February of this year uh, when I first found the collection. So this is the Pomological Watercolor Collection. Pomological is a word that is like my third most common used word in my vocabulary these days, but many people don't know it. It's pertaining to the study of fruit and its cultivation. Um, and I will go more into it uh, in a minute. So for me, the story starts in February of 2015. Um, when I was doing a project just for myself uh, called Public Domain Thing of the Day. I was trying to challenge myself to look, uh, to find on the internet a thing that I didn't know existed that was in the public domain uh, because I think the public domain is really important and I think that if you don't use it, uh, then you lose it. Then the next time we're arguing about whether we should have a public domain, basically, uh, people won't be able to point to the valuable stories. So, so this is my personal challenge, and I was doing it through the month of February. And uh, I found these images. Um, I love the public domain because it presents an alternative not just to the heavily controlled works, but also to the idea of a permission culture. I like that uh, images that are in the public domain and works that are in the public domain you can use for whatever. So uh, you know, I do like that West Side Story can exist. Uh, without getting the, the permission of, of the uh, Shakespeare estate. But I also like that bad adaptations of Shakespeare can exist. I like that, no, you don't have to ask. You don't, it's not, you know, not just the good ones. Um, so I really like that. Uh, when you think of the public domain, or when I think of the public domain, a lot of people just think of really old stuff, um, stuff that is just so old that it either came before copyright or, uh, or the term has lapsed. Um, we don't get new works in the public domain through uh, expiration anymore. Um, that hasn't happened in almost 20 years. Have, have people seen this chart? This is one of the, it's, it's very confusing at first, but once you get it, it's, it's really remarkable. Um, this is, it shows how as we've extended the, the term of copyright on older things, uh, it, the, the time from, from when it's created to when we actually get something uh, you know, obviously it goes up and up. And so since we lasted that in 1998 for 20 years, we just don't get anything now. So like this, I, for half of my life, you know, I'm a, I'm a public domain advocate who hasn't gotten any new public domain. So that's a very, it's a weird thing and it's a, it's a strange set of circumstances. Uh, but it's not all, uh, it's not all like that because there's another source of things in the public domain and that's government works. Uh, Works by government employees in the U.S. are in the public domain. Uh, there are some really cool government employees. So, like, these works um, are in the public domain. And that's a cool thing that, like, every, almost every picture that's been taken by a person in space is, is free for all of humanity to use. And I think that's a beautiful thing, and it's kind of just an accident of, of the way that, you know, the copyright law was drafted. Um, but that's really cool. So I was in part of the, the public domain thing of the day project. I was uh, sort of spelunking through .gov domains, looking for sets of, of works that I had never found. And I found uh, these images. Um, these are two and two more of, uh, of 7,500 um, images of, uh, of fruits and nuts. They're all watercolors. They're painted between... 1886 and 1942, with most of them around the turn of the century. Um, they are just, you know, obviously jaw-droppingly beautiful. Um, maybe not, you know, you sometimes have to look at a bunch of them before you find the really beautiful ones. Um, and they served a really important purpose. This was uh, a, a century ago or more. Um, 
this was the only source of, of scientific information about, uh, about fruits that may have been hard to observe in other parts of the world. So the USDA commissioned these um, from 21 artists, nine of whom were women, by the way. So it's, it's, like a, it's, it's a better representative project than a lot of the ones that we talk about 100 years later, um, where uh, these would get painted, and then they would get lithographed and, and put in official USDA publications. And that was the way that you would see you know, a mango from India or something. And there are images from specimens in all 50 states and something like uh, 60 countries. And it's just this, uh, this incredible uh, collection. Um, the USDA has called it uh, perhaps the most attractive as well as historically important of, of the National Agriculture Library's treasures. Um, and so you can imagine the most beautiful, the most important. Uh, how is this being honored? How is this, you know, how is this being made available? Um, and the answer, as I found when I, when I stumbled across the collection, uh, is you're not very well. I... Uh, they were all available online, but you got these wimpy 600 pixel uh, previews. That was all you got, and you knew that there was more uh, because, they, in part because the the uh, the images were all called screen.jpg. So you're like, oh, there's there's print.jpg somewhere. Like this exists. Um, uh, but then also I, I poked around and I and I saw that. Uh, that you could request up to three images from the collection. You pick three and you could request them and they would give them to you free, uh, but anything more than that and you have to pay $10 per image. And I was like, okay, that's a, I, there, was a there was a moment uh, where I thought, okay, 7,500 images, like I could get the first three and then can I find $75,000 for fruit pictures to just like liberate them? Um, and fortunately, I did not, you know, spend a Tesla worth of money on fruit paintings. Um, but I did want to know more. I wanted to know how this worked. Uh, how, why is it that this collection exists and it was, it's all been digitized, but it's hidden here? And does it, like, is anyone using this? Is this a, and so uh, that, you know, entered the other interesting thing about government uh, works in particular, um, which is the Freedom of Information Act. Uh, which, I, which again, probably won't come up too many times here, but uh, the Freedom of Information Act is a law that's been around for coming up on 50 years now, um, and it allows you to request certain kinds of information from agencies uh, within the executive branch. Um, the USDA, for example, uh, is within the executive branch. Also, you know, the Department of Homeland Security or the FBI or whatever, and usually when you read a story, a news story that's been, you know, according to documents obtained via the Freedom of Information Act, uh, it's one of those more serious agencies. Um, but uh, you, can, you can do it with any of these. And it, I, I think even more perhaps than editing Wikipedia, uh, making a a FOIA request seems pretty intimidating for a lot of people. Um, I, you know, I, I think probably most people I know haven't filed one. It's very easy. It's writing a letter, basically. You have to say three or four things. Um, you say what you want, and, uh, and then you can, you, you send it off. And they, you know, they don't always get back to you. They don't always get back to you quickly. Um, but this is just, it's not really that much harder than, you know, writing a professor and asking for an extension on a paper. It's like, it's, it's a pretty straightforward thing. And um, I use a service called Muckrock, which is not, you know, there are a bunch of these. And they basically do the rest of it for you. So you don't even have to find the address. You don't have to bug the agency. Like, are you ever going to answer that? Um, so I, uh, I really enjoy this and I was really intrigued and I wanted to know more and it turns out that you know I've got this law available to me uh, to get to know more. Um, so I, uh, I had, I, I, I started with a simple request. I said in, in February after finding it I said can you send me information about the costs and revenues associated with the with this collection? So uh, and I actually, you're supposed to give a date. I didn't even do that. I was just like, costs and revenues. Um, and, uh, and they responded. 
and a month later I got an answer um, and it cost, uh, uh, and I got this, actually this is very cool. Um, you don't normally get this, I think, with these sorts of collections. I got the report, the final report on the digital conversion project, uh, which has all of the information about the, the source images. It has all the information they have about the collection, basically. It has you know, where they got the money from to do this, and it's all this stuff. It's super interesting reading if you're at all interested in, in archiving and stuff, and you see the way that they, you know, uh, the resolution that they scanned things at, and, and the resolution that they transferred things at, and the, the data sizes and stuff. Um, and this was, I, this was responsive to my request for costs because that was one of the costs. Um, so what, what I found out from this uh, was that the costs associated with it were $288,422 as a digitization project. Um, that was funded by a grant. Uh, of the 7,500 images in the collection, uh, a little over 3,800 are apples. And there was an Apple scientist who had come to uh, the USDA looking for uh, the, their images. And he had a grant from this organization. And, and he said, you know, we can probably get you one to, to digitize the rest of these. And so they did that. And so they got a grant, a little under $300,000 to digitize all these and put them all online. Um, in the five years since they started digitizing, until I, I discovered them. So four years of having them online. Uh, they had delivered 81 files where people had requested, uh, you know, either their three or beyond the three. Uh, that was a total of $565 in revenue for them. Um, and having this information really changed the perspective for me. It wasn't like I was going to be taking away money from like the, the Department of Agriculture or from you know, our nation's farmers or from anything like that. This was something that was not being used in that way. Um, and so uh, I, I did what you know I, I do best as a, as a millennial. I blogged about it. Um, and, uh, and this blog got some attention uh, inside of the federal government apparently. Um, I, you know, I, probably in the halls of, of the USDA, a lot of attention all at once on their, um, on, on this collection was, was startling. Uh, I know another thing that happened is that I said this thing about the three um, images and then you have to, uh, you get those free. Um, and so uh, a, a wonderful uh, novelty account on Twitter who's completely pseudonymous, I have no idea who this is, um, who goes by the name Real Avocado Fact tweets as an avocado, um, started coordinating people to make uh, like, like strategic requests for three. Let's see how much of the collection we can get just from people getting their free part. Um, so, so actually, this had an unintended effect uh, that th they freaked out. And they were like, actually, we don't have the free program anymore, which is not what I intended to do. Um, uh, but this was apparently more attention than they were used to. Uh, but at the same time, I also filed another FOIA request. And I said, I know exactly where the files are, because I had the digitization report. I know exactly what format you have and, and where they're stored even. Uh, can, you just, <laughs> can you just give me the files? And, uh, and they did actually kind of one better than that, which is they said, we've received your FOIA request. We have decided to put high resolution JPEGs of all of the images online. And there's now on every one of the pages uh, a download link. And you can download. It's not screen.jpg. It's you know, palm0000, et cetera, .jpg. And it's a huge uh, JPEG file. So that was great. Um, that was, and you know, that could have been a, a victory. But then I, I would be giving this talk at uh, Future Farmers and not at, uh, at Wikicon. Because um, then what I did was I downloaded all of them. And I, uh, I had to do a little script to do that. I hadn't done that before. Uh, it's like 60 gigabytes of fruit pictures. Um, and, you know, I completely saturated my home network connection. Uh, ran it all weekend. Um, and then I, I had them. Uh, and then this is, this is the part where there's a lot of dot, dot, dots. I figured out how to upload them all to Wikimedia Commons. Um, this was the hardest part of the project uh, because, A, I had to 
learn myself to Python. Um, but B, the documentation is, is getting better, but it's a little all over the place. And so normally you've got the full cooperation of the, of the like archive. And here I was kind of flying by the seat of my pants. Um, so I used PyWikiBot. Uh, as I was going along, I Googled for like a million different combinations of like mass uploading, batch uploading, Wikipedia, Wikimedia, and I found all this stuff. Um, and I got it, and, and I you know, figured it out, more or less. Um, they are all in, in the category, and uh, I'm working on um, putting them in better subcategories now and also making them more discoverable, uh, illustrating articles, um, and highlighting the ones I think make the collection special. Uh, the collection really is special. Um, one fun example was the same week I put up my blog post, Washington State University wrote about a researcher using the watercolors to resurrect apple cultivars that had been lost for a hundred years, and you know, but but maybe distributed through Washington. Um, just this week, uh, there was this Slate Vault article about uh, the about the collection. Um, it is, I think, the first journalistic piece to avail itself of the high resolution photographs. It it embeds them. Um, what's really cool to me is that its author appears to not know that I exist, which is cool. I don't want to be in the middle of this fruit picture story. I just want the public to have, you know, that's, that's a cool, I, I'm glad that like somehow the author found out about this. Um, so I think that's really cool. I've also had numerous people who teach watercolors, teach watercolor painting, tell me uh, that they either could have or will be using these as teaching aids because they're beautiful watercolors and they're 100 years old. So this is like the sort of thing that the NAL might not have thought about, but once they're out there, once they're doing their public domain thing, they can you know be be thinking like a dandelion and just you know growing a million seeds everywhere. So that's great. Um, the USDA knows how valuable they are uh, with today's growing. This is from the USDA. Today's growing interest in heirloom varieties and others that are no longer commonly grown. The collection is an invaluable storehouse of fruit knowledge and history. I agree. Uh, they also said, oh, I said this before, perhaps the most attractive as well as historically important of the National Agricultural Library's treasures. And now you can see it. Um, in order to highlight it, I, uh, I, I finally, so this was a very personal project for a long time, but the first like outside thing happened uh, with this app, Palmer Knot. I, I both recommend and request that you try Palm or Not. What it does is it shows you two random images from the collection. Uh, it's at palmornot.herokuapp.com. Shows you two random images from the collection. You say which one is better. I mean, we don't, like, more interesting or whatever. And, uh, and then there's a leaderboard. Um, and almost all of them have been voted on at this point. There have been thousands and thousands of votes. I've sat there for, like, you know... 20 minutes, just like, all right, left, all right, right. It's fun. It's, you know, beautiful. You get, you get to look at them. Uh, and, you know, at the same time, we'll, we'll know which ones to, to feature, highlight, or include on pictures. There's one green apple picture that is just crushing everybody else. Um, and, and, you know, I wouldn't have found it otherwise. Uh, so quick lessons. Um, and then I can, I can cut to questions. Uh, be bold. This is like a you know good policy. Um, I w was inclined to be like, well, it's a bummer. I even had people when I told them that I FOIA'd it, be like, all right, good luck getting that. You know, you you only get what you ask for. So I I appreciated that. Uh, cooperation is better. It, uh, I don't think FOIA is uncooperative, but it really is nice to have the assistance of people who know what they're doing, um, which does not include me most of the time. Uh, Tapping into the community was super helpful. I ran into to PyWikiBot issues, and uh, and I would find developers and and volunteers and people who every, every time I tweeted about like not being able to do Python, I had I had people reply to me and be like, okay, what do you need? And that was super helpful. I I cannot overstate that. Um, one sort of funny one is that wikis are quicksand. Uh, it is if you've got a long term project. I strongly advise planning out the steps at which it will be like available for anybody to change parts of it. I have been meaning to for a couple of weeks to fix the categories, and now it's happening underneath me, and that's kind of scary, um, but, but, but cool. Um, and then finally, uh, 
experts are really a thing. Um, I made the very early and totally correct decision to link every every image to its like canonical USDA page. Um, there's stuff that they know to include. There's metadata that they've got that I didn't know whether it was important or how to how to reference it. Um, and I do think uh, it's tempting to go like, well, this should be free for everybody. Throw it on Wikipedia. But also to say, and we should incorporate the expertise of the people who know about this. And in the case of, of the USDA, uh, that is definitely more them than me. Um, but I've become sort of a, a, a fruit pictures expert. So that's been, uh, that's how I spent my summer vacation. Um, <laughs> so thank you. Uh, I did go a little longer than I planned to, but I do have time for questions. Um, and uh, which I can take at the mic, or I can take on Twitter, or uh, whatever you whatever you like. <laughs>